a year of momentous happenings, 1985 stands out as a year of global giving, hijacks and remembrance. According to organiser Bob Geldof, it was the greatest gig in the galaxy. The gig was Live Aid, a huge charity event staged simultaneously at Wembley Stadium in London and John F. Kennedy Stadium in Philadelphia and televised live across the world. It was one of the biggest stage shows in history, with Phil Collins flying the Atlantic on Concord so that he could play at both Wembley and Philadelphia on the same day. In total, Live Aid raised over £150 million for famine relief. The Band Aid Trust chartered two vessels to take shipments of donated goods to Ethiopia and the Sudan. Bob Geldof personally headed a team that was responsible for using the donated money the right way. We err on the side of caution and responsibility rather than rashness and impetuosity because I want those people to be around 20 years from now. I don't want to just scatter the money and the responsibility, as far as I read it, and the job, the brief as I see it, is to keep people alive. And the responsibility is to protect the money that people gave us. Not to be outdone by rock and roll, leading opera stars sang in Italy's Arena di Verona a month later also to raise money for African famine victims. Spanish tenor Jose Carreras and soprano Montserrat Caballé led an international lineup in front of an audience of 20,000 people at the concert, which was inspired by the Live Aid rock event held earlier in the year. They listened to the cream of the opera world presenting arias from such classics as Bizet's Carmen, Verdi's Il Trovatore and Rossini's Barber of Seville. It was one when I have seen on TV these two wonderful concerts, the pop people did uh, in Wembley, in London and in uh, Philadelphia and I thought why not opera people, classic music uh, world, when we don't have to be able to, to do the same. The funds raised were to go to UNICEF and other charities providing aid for the starving in Ethiopia and the Sudan. 1985 saw many who were prepared to give to help others. While there were an unfortunate few who were prepared to further their own cause by striking terror in the hearts of international travellers. When TWA Flight 847 was hijacked shortly after taking off from Athens by two German-speaking Lebanese men who had smuggled pistols and grenades through the airport security, the world watched in dismay. The ordeal lasted two weeks while the aircraft was forced to fly from Beirut to Algiers and return several times. Although most of the passengers were finally released unharmed, the hijackers had, while in Beirut, identified a U.S. Navy diver, Robert Statham, among the passengers whom they shot and killed. Later in the year, the Italian cruise ship, the Achille Lauro, while sailing off Egypt, was commandeered by four men allegedly representing the Palestine Liberation Front. The hijackers executed one wheelchair-bound passenger and threw his body overboard. While atrocities were taking place in other parts of the globe, an anniversary was being commemorated in Japan. A crowd of 55,000 gathered in Hiroshima's Peace Park to mark the 40th anniversary of the atomic bomb, which had reduced the city to rubble and killed 200,000 of its people. The crowd stood in silence in sight of the A-bomb dome, the only piece of atomic ruin left untouched in the rebuilt city. At precisely 8.15 a.m., a bell tolled to mark the exact moment of the blast on August the 6th, 1945. As most stood in prayer, many of them weeping, a group of mourners lay down in the dome in a symbolic die-in for peace. The mayor of Hiroshima, Takeshi Araki, appealed to the superpowers to work for the total abolition of nuclear weapons. After the speeches, a flock of 1,500 doves was released over the peace park while hundreds of small coloured candles floated on a nearby river in honour of the lives lost. In a year of momentous happenings, 1985 proved that it is possible for peace and goodwill to exist in a troubled world. Music